Hey guys, so a dealer brought this uh, Danish credenza into our store. He recently imported this piece from Denmark. Um, he, he did have a problem with it and he didn't know what to do with it. Um, he wasn't sure if he was going to salvage it or try to fix it and keep it. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try and fix it the best we can and uh, and try and try and sell it for him. But what's wrong with it? Yeah, so what's happening with this is, if you look at this, this is a tambour door. So the cool part of it is that the door kind of disappears. So if you open it, it goes all the way. So it's supposed to go all the way up to here. But if you look at this door right here, it gets stuck right here. What's tambour door mean? So tambour door, so if you look at the door itself, it's kind of like individual slats right here. They kind of move relative to each other. And so as you open it it just kind of just kind of stores itself in the back so it's kind of a design aesthetic where the door itself kind of gets out of the way but given that there are some issues over time where you see issues like that where the door gets stuck um, so to kind of help them out a little bit and also help them sell it we're going to try and get this door fixed first uh, before we get it listed so i did some work ahead of time uh, to kind of diagnose the problem. So I'm going to kind of go over what I found and how I'm going to fix it. So <clears throat> what type of wood is it? So with, with Danish mid century furniture, it's always, it's always a combination. Um, so it's hard to tell, um, with any type of wood, it's hard to tell because they're really good at staining the color they want it to be at. But what we know for sure is, uh, the, <clears throat> The core, I'm not sure what wood it is, but on the top, they use teak veneer. So, so it's teak veneer, and typically Danish furniture on drawers, sometimes they use birch, uh, but in this case, I'm not quite sure what it is. You can see the Danish stamp here if you wanna show them the stamp. Yeah, it's a very nice, very sought after imported piece, but this, um, the door issue is a nuisance, right? Um, this is a typically a high-end piece and you don't want your door to not work because folks are paying a lot of money for it. You want to make sure it's working 100%. Um, so I looked at the issue ahead of time and I, I think I diagnosed the problem and kind of how to fix it. So I'm just kind of going to go over and kind of show you guys what I found. What do credenzas like this go for that we're putting so much time into researching it and fixing it? Um, typically, so you're looking at a 72 inch credenza. These guys go for anywhere between uh, 3,500 and $6,000. Wow, what and makes it 3,500 versus 6,000? Um, you can look at the details, right? So if you look at the edge detailing, um, so what they did is um, they put some solid wood edge banding around, around the edges. It makes it more durable. Versus versus if you look at the other uh, credenzas, you won't have this detail and it'll be straight down flat. In that case, there is just using a thin, <coughs> thin veneer to kind of, you know, be economical. Nothing wrong with that. It's just more economical. It's just how much money you want to spend on it and what details are more important to you. Right. This one, they have a little bit of bells and whistles and then they have drawers are nice and felt lined. Right, so it's so it's very cool. It's very smooth, and the shelves are here, but we didn't put it up. Um, the hardware is still here, but you have two shelves on either side. So you can either remove the shelves and you can put records in it, or you can just you know you can use the shelves and you can put your DVD player or CD player. How old is it? Or if you want to use it as a buffet, um, I would estimate this is anywhere between 1960 and 1980s. And it's hard, again, it's hard to tell because um, a lot of this stuff is kind of a hearsay because um, in Denmark, back in the 60s and 80s, a lot of folks were making, you know, mid-century furniture was really big back then. And there are a lot of manufacturers making furniture. Um, unless you have a brand name, which you can tie down to a particular time period, it's really hard to tell when exactly it is, but we estimate Based on the patina of the wood, we estimate 1960s and 1980s. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show the back of it. I did some work, I did some work ahead of time. So to kind of figure out why the door was sticking, I had to remove the back. Okay. So if you can see, I removed the back 
to see what the problem was. So I'm just going to go in real quick. So, so right when the door gets up, this is a tambour door, so it just slides back and forth. So right when the door gets to about here, something is, it's, it's kind of tight, sticking a little tight right here. So what I initially did is I applied some silicon grease because I initially thought that maybe there's some gunk buildup uh, here. So what I did is I vacuumed the tracks and I applied some silicon grease to make it slide easier. From Home Depot? Um, no, that's from Rockler. It's a wood shop. Okay. So you can buy it in a wood shop. So that didn't help very much. It was still sticking. You see how it's kind of resistance? So I was kind of messing around with it for a little bit. And what I figured was right when it gets to this spot, I, I can hear it binding on the top and the bottom right here. So what's happening is the top panel right here is kind of getting in the way. It's almost like this tambour door is getting, is getting scrunched, right? When you're getting it scrunched, it's not, it's not giving it room to move. So I had to put that theory to test. So what I did is, so I have my clamp right here. So what I'm doing is, so I have to make sure, uh, I have to test the theory that the top panel is scrunching the, the tambour door here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of pushing the, the panel apart here with a clamp right here. So I'm kind of pushing this apart to see if that's going to help the situation. You don't want to go too crazy on this. Just be careful. Just go a little bit at a time. So I did that. And I'm going to go on the other side real quick to test it. So if you come to this side, so now, no problem. <gasps> right? But how are you going to so keep right, it open? It, well, it's stopping here mm. because it's hitting that where I have the clamp, but it's just a temporary solution to see that it's working, right? So that's the issue. So how do I replace the clamp? Obviously I can't have a clamp right here and close it up. So what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna show the back of it real quick again. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the clamp off. So I need something to replace the clamp. So what I did is, so I measured the, I'll show you right here. So I measured the, the gap, how much the gap is from here to here. Mm. So that was about 18 and 1 16th of an inch. Okay. So I need something a little bit bigger to push the panels apart. Okay. So what I did is, uh, so Home Depot has these paint stirring sticks. Um, they're solid pine. So I had a few extras that from my other project that I'm going to reuse. So I measured a little bit above 18 and 1 16th. So I went to like a, one notch above and then I cut it short. Okay, so I cut the, the wood short. So what I do is, so I kind of put this right here. And it's kind of hard from this angle, but you kind of short on room. This is just a demonstration, but I'll later I'll glue it in, in place. So when you do that, in essence, this is doing what the clamp was doing. So I, I'm creating an interference to push the top and the bottom apart a little bit, right? So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here, right? So trying to get this straight, oh, oops, that's okay. Mm. What? Let me see. It's hard to do it from this angle. This way. Yeah, you'll get the point. Yeah. Just trying to. Just so I think what I'll do is I'll add some round around the corners so it slips easier, right? So. Butter. See, now I'll show you. So with this in place, right? So now you can see the door. Whoa. No more sticky. So we see this, <coughs> we see this type of um, issues with credentials is one way to fix it. There are different, 
tambour doors are nice. The doors kind of go out of the way and you have a clean look. You don't have a door hanging, the swing open doors that's hanging in the way. This kind of gives you a clean look, but you can have issues with it. And this is one of the issues which we fixed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make that solution more permanent. I'm going to epoxy glue it in place so it stays there. And then I'll close the back panel up and we're ready to go. So yeah, it works. It works just like it's supposed to. Do you expect problems like this to arise in similar pieces? Or why didn't you just buy a piece that was perfect already? Well, um, that's the thing with vintage, right? I mean, the construction methods they used back then is, is a little different than um, how they do it now. I mean, they used a more reliable uh, furniture construction methods where it made the furniture more durable. This thing is more than 50 years old. And if you see how it's holding up shape and how sturdy it is, we cannot expect it in furniture these days. And this is expected because you're talking about a very long panel. And over time, depending on hot or cold, things are going to move. Right, things are going to settle. Things are going to move. Um, it's it's part of it's part of it's part of the life life cycle of the furniture, and this type of furniture is worth maintaining because no one makes this anymore, especially in this quality anymore. It's just it's nice to have a vintage furniture that you can kind of maintain it over time, and it's hard to hard to find. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at furniture these days, it's a little bit more crude construction. They use it for high volume con uh, construction methods and those things break apart quite a bit. This is nice glued, you know, fit, you know, dovetail joinery. This is gonna last the test of time. And you, you're gonna have some nuisances here and there with stuff like this, but it's workable. And, you know, it's a great piece. I mean, I've never seen a, a modern furniture that looks as good as a, a vintage furniture. And, and if you look at it, a lot of modern furniture design is based on vintage looks. I mean, if you look at a lot of high-end furniture stores these days, and if you look at their design aesthetic, they follow Danish design aesthetic. They follow early, you know, American mid-century design aesthetic. You know, it's all, these guys set the stage for what you guys see now, but in terms of how they did it, the, I really feel like these guys have done it better. They balanced the material, um, the construction, and how it's put together very well compared to the furniture you see. So that's why we love vintage so much. Sometimes it's hard. It's uh, worth saving. Working with uh, vintage, but I think it's worth saving. Look at, I mean, look at how beautiful this is. This is almost like a statement piece. You can put this in your house and everyone's going to look when they walk in through the door or you go to the dining room or I don't know, you use it in the dining room as a buffet or you use it in the living room as a TV stand, it's going to catch an eye, you know. What part of it is solid wood? Go over a little bit about the construction. Um, so the Point out the solid wood parts. Yeah, so it's easier to when you look at it in the back because the, the back kind of tells the story. The lights, um, the lights. Oh, yeah. Um, the back kind of, okay. My wife was warning me about the legs. You want to make sure you don't want to twist these too much. So, um, if you look at it in the back, you can kind of tell the story here. So, if you look at it here, so it's it, the core is MDF, and they put a teak veneer on it, right? Um, same, same with the back, right? So. The core is MDF and it's veneered on the side. And with, with this one, it's high quality to protect the, uh, typically like if you have a MDF edge, it breaks, it chips. And um, I don't want to say it, but like a kind of a high volume retailer, uh, the, the name starts with an I and ends with an A. If you look at a lot of their furniture, you know, it, it, the, the corners chip and all that because the the, the, M, the, the MDF is exposed, the, the chip wood is exposed. So what the Danish guys did, the high-end furniture at least, they use solid wood edge banding to protect the corners. You can, you can run this against an edge. You're not going to have a big enough, you'll dent it, but you won't have a big damage. But if you um, 
run a big box store dresser against an edge, you're going to see a big, big chip, right? You're going to see a big chip, right? And um, the yeah, so and the edge banding is solid. Um, and I think the, the drawers are solid as well. So you can kind of, yeah, I think the drawers are solid. See the back panel is solid. You can kind of tell. And I think the sides are solid. Cause this is not, this doesn't cost them too much to make solid. These are small pieces of wood. Show the uh, dovetailing. It doesn't <coughs> cost them too much. This is like a dovetailing is a smaller piece. So it's kind of a dovetail design right there. Um, it's not really a dovetail. It's more like a, it's dovetail. Uh, like a finger joint. It's called dovetail. Yeah. Well, well. It's not yeah. stapled. Yeah, it's not stapled. So the legs are solid wood. And like I said, the edges are solid wood. Um, um, oh, one cool thing is, so if you come closer here, see um, the dowel, the holes, the dowel pin holes where the shelves are standing, they align this with metal. For durability mm. so what happens is typically like over time if it's just a since it's a chipboard on the inside it'll wear off the holes will get bigger so they lined it with a metallic bushing to uh for durability so all that adds value that's 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 attention to detail so next week we should go over a piece where it's less it's still pretty in design but less of all these details just give them a quick sneak peek the yeah. one right behind you is uh um it's a nice piece, but it's still like less. This one? Yeah. Is it? So, yeah. So if you look at this one, you see the, the front? They, they, still, oh. they still use the uh, solid banding, but it's not as thick or s robust as the other one. Robust. So, you know. But yeah, I mean, this is an amazing piece. And I'm, I'm, no, uh, I'm glad, we're glad that we, are finding, we found a way to fix the door situation. So it doesn't go to the landfill. So it doesn't get salvaged, yeah. And I've seen a lot of, uh, we had a, a tambour door um, credenza before, a much smaller one, much nicer one. We went, out, went about a wrong way in fixing it and we had to salvage the piece, it's, it's gone. So um, I had to figure out a way to remove the tambour door on this one. But uh, yeah, it's an experiment. Um, this, uh, it's kind of the fun thing about working on these, you learn a lot. Um, it kind of sets you up for future. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, I mean, yeah, it's a great piece. So, so yeah, just wanted to give you a, a quick, uh, way on how to fix a tambour door and that's how we did it. And what to look out for when you're also in the market for buying one of these. Yeah. 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 Thanks guys for watching. Um, please follow our channel, Big Wheel Consignment and, uh, subscribe and like. And check out our website, please. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Guys.